All right, what's up YouTube? I'm back again with another video. And I know a lot of you have been asking for a Pro Tools template, and that's exactly what you're getting in this video. I'm gonna be showing you guys this Pro Tools template that I've been using for a really long time when I was out in LA. It's actually the exact template I was using for tracking like all the artists that we'd work with out there. And it's been about a year in the making, but I finally have these songs with Warhol that dropped. So what we're gonna do is just pull up the actual session and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I tracked and engineered the song. So I'm gonna show you guys the template and we're gonna go over a few settings and everything like that. And I'm gonna show you guys the actual song. Before we do get started, if you could do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. And also if you enjoy this video at all, or if you just like my content, make sure you guys go down and hit that like button and leave a comment. Let me know what you guys wanna see next. As always, this template will be available at my website, which is quintinbobby.com. I'll pop up what the template looks like, but you can always just check that description below or the pinned comment. Anyways, let's jump into Pro Tools. All right, so here is the session right here i've been using this template for a while now it's pretty basic it doesn't have too much stuff in it but that's how i usually like to keep my templates i like to add as i go just because i feel like starting out with a super bulky template is just means for you to mess up during the uh actual session but before we do anything i'll just give you guys a little peek at what this song actually sounds like leaving my impression i'm the first one made it out my hood and that's impressive cardi ain't my vision and that skeleton like treasure Prime down chocolate mouth bring the stretches pop a pink tea and i feel lighter than a feather so yeah, once I actually sent out the project to Warhol himself, of course, when the song actually dropped, it got mastered. So I tried to replicate that master as much as possible, but they did end up doing like an ad lib take in a different studio. So there are some ad libs that I do not have, but I have just the main take right here. And I'll just go over exactly how I use this template. So I have my record track right here, which basically has all the plugins that we have on our lead bus but um, I kind of just edit this record track as I go. And then if I make any adjustments here, I'll just drag all the effects over to the lead bus. And basically in Pro Tools, you work with a lot of aux inputs, which is basically it'll send a signal from, for example, this hook is getting sent over into the lead, which is this bus right here. And all these tracks right here all get sent out, or not the background vocals, but all these hooks get sent out to the lead bus. And this is where I do a majority of the mixing at. As you can see on the actual track where the vocal is, there's just an auto-tune plugin, but I don't even have that on because Warhol actually doesn't use autotune but let's jump into the lead bus so a little weird started out with a de-esser but uh, i have the threshold down here with the frequency at 5506 and if we play that we'll try and find some s's so you can see it actually activating but it's not doing too much besides just bringing out some of the harshness in his voice leaving my impression i'm the first one made it up yeah so as you can see anytime there's like an s or any sibilance it'll knock that out and we go with our first EQ. I'm using FabFilter Pro Q, my favorite EQ, just because the interface is just perfect. And it has like this dynamic effect where you can make it kind of like a multi-band compressor. And I have this kind of like mild slope down here in the low end, and I'm boosting the highs a little bit. And then there's just one little frequency that I cut out by doing a frequency sweep. And this is also dynamic, and this one is dynamic as well. I'll play that so you guys can see exactly what it does. But if you want to make any of these points dynamic, all you do is right click and click. It'll say make dynamics, but it says clear right here because it's already dynamic. I'll play this just so you guys can see what it's doing. Leaving my impression. I'm the first one made it out my hood and that's impressive. Cardi ain't my vision. Yeah, as you can see, it's basically compressing certain areas of the song. And I'm compressing a little bit of the low end just because when we actually did this take, he was pretty close to the mic. And when you get closer to a mic, your voice gets a lot like deeper and bassier. So I wanted to take care of that low end, so we did that. And like I said, there was just a little part right here that didn't sound too hot in the area we were, so fix that up. And then we go into our first compressor, our R comp, great compressor. Threshold sitting at about 23, have the ratio at 4.09. And the attack release are right at the same pretty quick attack and a pretty fast release. So I'll play that again so you can get an idea what it's going for. I also have some makeup gain here. Makeup gain is just when you compress a vocal, it's gonna get quieter. So I brought it up five decibels of makeup gain. Leaving my impression, I'm the first one made it out my hood, and that's impressive. Cardi ain't my vision, and that skeleton like treasure. Yep, and then we have our SSL channel. This is just emulating a solid state logic board, which is a piece of hardware that was used to engineer vocals back in the day when there wasn't software like this. But basically, all we're doing here is bringing up some high end, a little bit of the high mids. Then we're controlling the low mids right here, and then the actual low. Nothing too fancy here at all, kind of just 
adds a little sprinkle on top of the vocal. And then we move on to the CL7, CLA76. I always say this is my favorite compressor. This is really what tends to bring most of the volume in like all of my mixes. Input and the output don't matter just because it's going to change for every single vocal. So don't copy these settings perfectly because it's basically your threshold and you're probably going to record at a different volume. Which everyone's been asking me recently, what do I record at? My opinion, it does not matter what level you record at as long as you are not clipping because you can always adjust the threshold to match the input of your microphone. But we have the attack sitting right at a medium level and then the release a lot faster. And we have the ratio at eight. Uh, I'm kind of doing a lot of compression with this. I'll let you guys listen to what it sounds with and without. Leaving my impression. I'm the first one made it out my hood and that's impressive. So that was with, I'll hit this bypass button and this will be without it. Leaving my impression. I'm the first one made it out my hood and that's impressive. So you kind of can hear uh, a lot of volume increase but if you have the ear for it, you can see that the vocal is actually getting pushed together and bringing the louder parts quieter. And some of the quieter parts are sounding a bit louder. And then I've been doing this a lot with my vocals recently. When I went back in and actually tried to match the master of this song, this is what I added. It's just a limiter. And I find this, I feel like people are doing this more and more now. They're limiting the vocals after you compress it. And basically what this does is it kind of just works as like an extra compressor, but it's more of like a brick wall. So it really just like smashes the vocal. I don't know. In my opinion, it's just starting to, it's something that I'm just really liking on my vocals. So I'll show you guys what this sounds like with it, with and without it. Leaving my impression. I'm the first one made it out my hood and that's impressive. And then with it. Leaving my impression. I'm the first one made it out my hood and that's impressive. Cartier my vision and that skeleton. It might be kind of hard to see exactly what I'm doing there, but believe me, it's definitely helping. Then we have a fresh air and this is not doing a lot just because it's getting sent into another aux. So we have our lead bus, our background vocals. They both get sent out into the Vox bus. You can see right here. And this is where I would mix all of my vocals together. So basically once I send the mixed version of the hook into this Vox bus, it's pretty much already mixed to where I want it, but I just want to add a few more things. So I always have, this is something that I used to do in the past like a year ago. I would always put NS1 on like everything. You don't have to do this. Basically just a noise gate. So we have an EQ. And as you can see, I wanted to add some high end, so kind of just have this slope going up right at the end and bringing out a little bit of these mid lows. And I always have this little high pass right at the end here. We have another R comp. For some reason, setup kind of weird, but it's not doing much. Two to one ratio with a decent attack and a fast release. And then this plugin is really cool. It's like a compressor emulating something. I'm not too sure. Leave a comment if you know. But I used to always have this on my mixes just because it makes it sound a lot better. Leaving my impression. I'm the first one made it out my hood, and that's impressive. And as you can see, we're actually getting a decent amount of compression there, minus three to minus five. And another DS or just control any of that harshness that is slipping through because we were adding a lot of high end. Then we have our main fresh air, which is adding a lot. So I'll play it without this. Leaving my impression. I'm the first one made it out my hood and that's impressive. So the vocal at this point was pretty much already completely mixed, but it's just boring. The vocal, I don't know, it just wasn't hitting enough. This this is literally one of my favorite plugins ever. Turn this back on, and as you can see, it just adds so much to the vocal. Leaving my impression, I'm the first one made it out my hood, and that's impressive. Cartier, my vision, and that skeleton like treasure. And then finally, we have the ozone imager. No idea why I even have this on here, it's not doing much. I just brought the width up and I sterilized it a little bit, but leaving my impression, I'm the first one made it out my. I mean, it's not really doing much. So now we'll move on to the reverb buses. And as you can see on the lead bus, I don't even have any of the reverb throws on here. They're all on the lead bus. Um, I have the reverb sitting at right around uh, 20%. And I also have a delay. And we'll scroll down and I'll show you how I did this. So here's the reverb bus. I'm using the Valhalla Vintage Verb. Copy these settings if you want. And then I also have this Waves EQ. Just pulling out some of that low end. I don't even know why I have that on there, to be honest. But it sounded good, so we're going to keep it. And then we have the H delay at a one-fourth dotted. Feedback's really low, and there's a bit of a high pass. That's pretty much it for the delay. And we'll move on to the mix bus. So this is where all the vocals get sent yet again. I just added, like, a little bit of glue. So we got this SSL compressor. I don't think it's doing much at all. Leaving my impression. I'm the first one made it out my hood, and that's And just a tad bit of compression. Like I said, that's kind of just gluing everything together, making sure everything sounds like one whole vocal project and not like a bunch of different separate tracks. Then we have our SSL. Or my bad, the beat's actually going into this mix bus as well. I forgot about that. So it's gluing everything together. And then we have our SSL, and the 808s in the beat were hitting a little too much, so I brought out some of that low end. 
then just a little bit of twinkle on top. And then of course we got a limiter. I don't know why this is set to 0.04. This should be set to 0.01. And we just have the threshold coming down right here because you want there to be about minus three to minus four decibels of reduction. That should be what we're getting. Leaving my impression. I'm the first one made it out my hood and that's impressive. Cardi ate my vision and that skeleton like treasure. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I said, if you want this template, you already know where to go. I'll pop it up. It looks like this, quintababa.com. Check that link down in the description below. But this is how me and Warhol tracked out this track. My favorite on the album. Let me know what you guys think of the album. Yeah, as far as the video goes, that's all I got. I'll see you guys in the next video, which should be very soon. I'm going to start uploading a lot more frequently. But yeah, stay tuned, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.